internet friends and welcome to subscriber story time number two. Oh, I'm gonna take a big poop. Just kidding. First off, <laughs> that was really weird. First off, I want to say that you guys are awesome. We hit 30,000 subscribers recently, which is cool. But what's even cooler is that you guys delivered with these stories, okay? I got 158 stories in my inbox from you guys so far. 158. If I do five every story time, I am covered for math and uh, a certain amount of time. That's how much time I'm covered for because math. Uh, what so thank you for being willing to share your stories with me and i want to get to all of you so here we go the stories start here and our first is from patricia hodgson patricia hodgson is that how you say your name i feel like i'm terribly terribly butchering that so here we go from patricia hodgson when my father passed away the army provided a beautiful headstone since we have relatives that live some distance away and are therefore unable to visit, I took some pictures of the grave, uploaded, and emailed them. Fast forward approximately 10 hours to about 2 a.m. I wake up and can hear talking. I woke my husband up, as one does in this situation, and we listen, but now all is quiet. He, of course, falls back asleep, thinking my cheese has slipped from my cracker, or at the very least, I had been dreaming. I lay there intently listening until about 15 minutes later, I hear the same voice that woke me up earlier. Now I realize it's coming from a motion activated toy on a keepsake shelf in the corner of our bedroom. Then a musical figurine next to it starts up. This one, unlike the first, someone has to manually press a button to start it. So I reawaken my husband. He agrees that it was not a dream the first time, but he also agrees that said noisemakers must be moved outside immediately. Once this is accomplished, I lay awake until dawn, listening to my husband snoring and wondering what to expect next, but all was quiet. The next day was uneventful, and eventually we went to bed around 11pm to watch TV. Suddenly, at approximately 1am, I hear what sounds like the drain rack full of dishes falling into our kitchen sink. I jump up and run down the hall to the kitchen and come up very short. As soon as the kitchen table comes into sight, I can also see a very dark form that appears to be standing next to it. I scream and beat feet back down the hall, and I make my husband return to the kitchen while I turn every available light on. He, of course, only finds an overbalanced dish rack in the sink, and I spend another sleepless night. The next day, I am half-heartedly doing some cleaning in the kitchen when I notice my camera sitting on the table. To take my mind off the past two nights, I start looking through the photos. Then I took the camera to my husband and showed him what appeared, at first glance, to be a shadow on my father's headstone. The problem was that this shadow was in the wrong place. My shadow was clearly visible in the picture, as it was a sunny morning and the sun was behind me, so my shadow was on the opposite side of the stone. So why were there two almost identical shadows in the picture? I was the only person in the whole cemetery when I took the photo. After some discussion, we decided to delete the pictures from the cemetery. We wondered if something had maybe just attached itself to the photo and come home with me. People can scoff and reason that the toys simply both malfunctioned. It can be said that what I saw in our kitchen that night was simply a trick of the light or lack thereof. My husband and I offered these suggestions and many others in the light of day. But personally, I don't know the answer. What I do know are two things. We still have the pair of noisy items, and they have never acted up again. Lastly, never again have I been awakened by an unexplained crash or witnessed an extra shadow standing in my kitchen in the middle of the night. Well, Patricia, thank you for sharing, but I'll have to say I don't like figurines or dark shadows standing in my kitchen. No thank you. I will pass. Um, I hope things have settled down now, but thanks again for sharing. I appreciate it. Story number two. <laughs> Number two again. This comes from fan or the, I'm sorry, the the fangirl, the only fangirl apparently. So here we go from the fangirl. My family has had experiences with car crashes, and one I experienced as a child led to what is likely the creepiest thing I have ever known. When I was about five or six years old, I was in a car accident with my mom. My head was hit hard enough that it knocked me out for an entire day. When I woke up in the hospital, all seemed well, but when I returned home after, things weren't so ordinary. I started having night terrors. 
things I had never experienced before, most of them involving a tall, dark figure. These terrified me and made sleeping difficult, and wherever I went, so went the terrors. I'd even had them in the daytime. One particular memory I have is of dozing while attempting to watch some training videos I was viewing for a job, and hearing a voice in my ear whisper sinister things. When I snapped to being fully awake, I was alone. However, a few years ago, I became friends with a Wiccan. She said she'd seen the figure as well, and to protect us both, she said she would put a charm and say incantations of protection. I'm Christian, but I appreciated her kindly intention gesture nonetheless. But it was a curious thing that the figure stopped bothering me. I still have nightmares, sometimes hear things, but nothing like that figure appears anymore. Fangirl, thank you for sharing. I sure hope you don't get into any more car accidents. That sounds like a horrible thing to be plagued by, and I'm certainly glad you're not being stalked by a tall, dark, and not-so-handsome creepy creature anymore. That's awesome. Um, I hope things stay well for you. Moving on! Next one comes to us from Vasti Flores. I probably butchered that. I'm sorry. Um, out of Mexico. Mexico! Now I'm Mexican, holla, but I can't speak a lick of Spanish, so forgive me if I mispronounce anything in this story, which I will. Here we go. I am from a very rural community in the middle of Mexico. The state is San Luis Potosi, and the town Venado, and the ranch Los Remedios. It's a place so behind that my dad still talks about when there was no plumbing or electricity when he was a child. There's a popular legend that emerged from the Mexican Revolution back in 1910. Because of the distrust of the people towards the government, they hid their valuables instead of placing them in the bank. The selected place for these valuables? A cave on a northern hill known as El Gatillado. And I don't even know what that means in Spanish, so it's impossible for me to translate that. The war ended and nobody went back to get it, and it's said that the huge treasure is still waiting to be discovered. My dad told me that if you go looking for the cave, you'll never find it. But if you happen to be wandering around, that's when you'll find it. And once you find it, a voice will say to you, all or nothing. If you decide to go and get buddies to help you get it, you won't find the place again. And so the treasure stays with no owner. Legend also says that the devil himself is also looking for this treasure, and he travels on his wagon every night looking for it. That is where my story begins. As a child, my sister and my mom took a walk every day at 6 a.m. just to get some exercise. They would get up and go pick up a friend of my mom's, and they'd walk south to another small hill out of the ranch and come back. One morning, I decided I wanted to join them. It was still dark out and kind of cold, and to get to my mom's friend's house, we had to basically cross the entire community and an empty field known as El Baggio. And while we were walking through this dark, empty field, we heard a wagon. We simply assumed it was a man getting started with his day and going out to work his land or tend his cattle. But we heard it getting closer and closer, and we looked around and saw nothing, absolutely nothing, and the noise didn't stop. We kept walking, getting to where the streetlights were, and we kept hearing the wagon, and it was getting faster. The panic I saw in my sister and mob made me panic as well, and so we started walking faster. Finally, we reached the lighted street, and we still heard the wagon. The sound was right behind us, and we still turned and saw nothing. We reached an alley that went directly to my grandparents' house and decided to hide there and wait to finally see this wagon. We waited there as we still heard it approach, and nothing just the constant noise of the wheels turning on the rocky road. The noise went right next to us, and we still saw nothing. We didn't move from there until we heard the wagon getting further and further away. And we continued on our walk, a little disturbed, until we reached my mom's friend's house and told her about it. When we tell the story, there's always someone who reminds us of the old legend, and tell their own accounts as well. I don't know what really happened that early morning, and I frankly don't want to know. Now it's just an interesting story for me to tell. Well, Vasti, that's uh, terrifyingly not okay. Um, the devil, the invisible devil, walked by you with his wagon. And I think it's safe to say I will never visit you. Nope, sorry. You're going to have to come to me. Thank you for sharing. Squeaky elbows are in. <laughs> Our fourth story comes to us from Smiling Chaos. Hello there. Thank you for submitting, and here we go.
So I have several unexplainable events that have happened to me throughout the years, and though I've told many of these stories to my friends, I've never told them this one. Let me note that nothing I'm about to say is made up. So here it is. When I was about four years old or so, I had went to the carnival with my family, and on that day I got this awesome Eeyore stuffed animal, you know, the sad donkey from Winnie the Pooh. So anyway, that night I went to bed holding my new friend tight in my arms and eventually drifted off to sleep. And as fast as I had gone to sleep, it was morning before I knew it. Though my shades were mostly closed, the room was shining from the morning sun, and I looked for Eeyore, who wasn't with me anymore. That's when I saw this thing out of the corner of my eye. I turned over to see Eeyore at the end of my bed, but he wasn't just sitting there. He was being dragged from the bed by something. It wasn't human. Or maybe it was. The hand clutching Eeyore was, for lack of a better term, deformed. I could see the disproportionate fingers, the abnormally long, crooked nails, and the bones sculpting the edges of the hand because the skin was so thin. The arm came from the other end of my bed like whatever it was had been under my bed reaching for it. I suffered from major anxiety until I started high school, and whatever did happen that morning made me sit still as a tree, stiff as a stone. I just laid in my bed waiting for whatever it was to reach up and grab me next. But since I'm still around to tell this story, it obviously never got me. Eventually, my mom came into my room, and I awoke from my trance crying. She asked me what was wrong, and I whispered to her, afraid of notifying the thing under my bed, what I saw. She obviously thought I was just imagining it, since I did have all that anxiety stuff. So she walked to the end of my bed and looked for the lost donkey, but it was gone. I don't really remember what happened after that. I just know that we never found Eeyore. So, in the end, maybe I could have just been imagining it, either because of my chronic nightmares or my anxiety, or maybe my parents accidentally gave me drugs before I went to bed. But the question still remains. What the hell happened to Eeyore? Nope. 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 No thank you! Um, I sincerely hope whatever you saw is no longer under your bed, because... <laughs> no. Thank you for sharing, Smiling Chaos. Thanks for the nightmares. I really appreciate that. And finally, we have story number five, our longest story of the day, but I think you guys will enjoy this one. Uh, this comes to us from Rachel. Here we go, from Rachel. My name's Rachel, and my creepy story involves accounts from others and happened to me around three or four years ago. I think I was around 10 or 11 at the time. My auntie moved into her new house with her husband and two children, and the house was literally one street away from mine, so I visited often to see my younger cousins. She'd been living in the house for a few weeks when she started hearing strange noises. One night around 10 o'clock, she said that she was sitting downstairs with her husband, and both of her children were asleep by this time. She had the TV on at a reasonable volume, but not too loud as to wake the kids. She said that she heard a really loud bang upstairs, so loud that it sounded like someone jumping from a bunk bed, followed by footsteps running onto the upstairs landing. My auntie just thought that one of the kids had woken up, and so she walked upstairs to put them back to bed. However, when she got upstairs, both of them were asleep in their beds. My auntie said she got a bit suspicious, but really didn't think much of it, thus returning downstairs. A few minutes later, she heard a bang again, followed by the sound of the toy train track in my cousin's room. My auntie again went upstairs, but they were both asleep. Her dog had been downstairs with her both times. She said that she thought my cousins were just messing around, and so she stayed upstairs for a while reading. But after an hour, she went back downstairs. Ten minutes later, she heard running again. The strange thing about this was that the house was old and had noisy floorboards, so she would have heard them running back into bed at least once, but she never did. At this time, my cousins were both really young, the eldest being around five or six, so they most likely would have fallen asleep in the hour that my auntie had been upstairs. The noises continued inconsistently for months. Both my mom and auntie have an interest in the paranormal, so my auntie would tell my mom about each thing that happened. One night, my uncle went upstairs to find my eldest cousin sitting in the middle of the room with his knees tucked into his chest, rocking back and forth. He apparently looked dazed. One day, when my mom and brother went in to open the curtains in the morning, they walked through the living room and straight into a strong smell of smoke. They said they stepped forward and the smoke was gone, but when they stepped back again, it was there. 
They said it burned their throats because of how strong it was. So here's my own personal experience with all of this. My mom, brother, and I were babysitting my auntie's children while she and her husband went out for their anniversary or something like that. We had the dog in the living room with us, and being as it was so late, both of my cousins had been asleep for a few hours. Now, I have a weird tendency to tell when something's wrong. Uh, I can't really explain it, but when I was at my auntie's that night, I felt super nervous, and I kept my coat on. I wasn't eating any food that we had, which was really out of character for me. My auntie hadn't heard anything strange in the house for around a month at this point, so I wasn't really worrying about that. We were watching a film when suddenly we heard a really loud bang upstairs. This was followed by running footsteps that ran to the top of the landing. I was already freaking out at this point, crying and feeling faint. The footsteps began running down the first few stairs so loudly they didn't even sound human. After a few steps, the footsteps were replaced by the sound of someone falling down the stairs. I grabbed my mom and ran for the door leading into the hallway, and I was about to open it when my mom stopped me. She said she could hear very faint movement from behind the door, like fabric. We opened the door a fraction to let my auntie's dog into the hallway, and she ran straight to the top of the stairs. There was nothing at the bottom of the stairs to suggest that anything had fallen down. I spent the rest of the night sitting in the car. When we told my auntie about this, she said the same thing had happened to her around a week before, only she didn't tell us because she didn't want to put us off at looking after the house. Anyways, she decided to research into the history of the house and found that a man who had previously lived there had gotten up in the middle of the night, had a heart attack at the top of the stairs, and died falling halfway down. The area that I live in has a lot of houses built around the Second World War, with a lot of them previously being bombed during that time. There are a lot of supposedly haunted houses in my area. And my auntie later moved out. That was a creepy experience for sure. Uh, as much as I love old houses, I don't think I'll want to live there. Um, and I hope that poor man stops reliving his death scene in the afterlife because... My god, it must not be fun to fall down the stairs a thousand times. Alright guys, that's all we've got for Spooky Sunday this week. If you have a creepy experience or story you haven't yet shared, you can comment it down below or send it to subscriberstorytime at gmail.com. Submit away and I look forward to reading your stories. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, which you should, I mentioned I would make this a weekly thing in addition to my normal videos. Which yes, I missed Friday's video, but the script is done and Monsters Among Us should be coming out next Friday. So. Next Sunday, I'll see you with another one of these videos. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night.